Hello everybody. Today, I will talk about my study about solving the quadratic assignment problem, shortly cap, through this presentation. Before I begin, I would like to thank you all for your understanding about my way of presenting, arising from my speech disorder. Okay let's begin. We will talk about hard problems first. Then, we will describe the quadratic assignment problem and our aim. After that, we will explain our genetic algorithm, our experiment, and results. We will conclude the presentation by summing up and declaring our suggestions for the future work. Let's start. In computer science, one way of classifying the problems is to classify them according their computational complexity. NP hard problems, you can see in the schema, have a high complexity. They are impossible to be solved in an acceptable time when the problem size increases. For such problems, I mean in NP, and harder problems, heuristic and metaheuristic approaches are much more powerful than the exact methods to find an optimal solution in a shorter computation time. Metaheuristic algorithms based on biological evolution are called evolutionary algorithms. These include evolutionary programming, evolution strategy, genetic algorithm, and so on. One of the NP hard problems is the quadratic assignment problem, or shortly CAP. It has various applications in real life, including the planning of campus, the design of the hospital, the placement of electronic components problems, and many more. That's why it is a problem, attracting academic researchers and scientists to find a solution. In our study, we designed and implemented a genetic algorithm to solve the quadratic assignment problem. Actually, there are various studies in this manner. However, we aimed to achieve satisfying results via a model prominent with its simplicity. Before I explain our model, it is better to elaborate CAP. In CAP, we try to have a one-to-one -one assignment between the facilities and the locations, but with the minimum cost. A one-to-one -one assignment means each facility is assigned to exactly one location. And each location has exactly one facility allocated to it. We said minimum cost, so we have to describe a cost function. There is a distance between each pair of locations and a weight is specified for each pair of facilities. The cost is calculated as the sum of the distances multiplied by the corresponding weights. This is how we can mathematically formulize CAP. It is actually a combinatorial optimization problem. Now, let's return to our model based on the genetic algorithm. Genetic algorithm is a population-based evolutionary algorithm. The algorithm originates from Charles Darwin's theory of natural selection. If we take a look at the general process of a genetic algorithm, we can see the big picture. Which methods did we use for each step of the genetic algorithm process? I will be answering this question after explaining how we represent each solution of the cap in our model. By the way, we call each solution as a chromosome or an individual. Each chromosome is represented as a permutation, which is nothing but a sequence of numbers from 1 to n, where n is the number of facilities and the locations. The idea is that each facility is assigned to its index location. For instance, if we had six facilities and locations, one chromosome might be like in the figure. The facility 4 would be assigned to the location 1, the facility 1 to the location 2, and so on. 
we initialize the population with randomly created chromosomes. The population size is set by 250 chromosomes, namely individuals, by taking into consideration the computation time to be optimal. In the classical tournament selection method, K individuals are selected arbitrarily from the population, and the individual with the best fitness is elected. And our GA individuals, or say parents, are selected to the mating pool with a modified tournament selection method. A probability parameter is used to control the selection of the best individual, so sometimes we select the worst individuals to increase diversity. Crossover is the way to create the children. We use two crossover methods, position-based crossover and two points crossover. In the position-based crossover, K indices are selected arbitrarily, and the genes at these indices are transmitted to the children directly. Then, the empty genes of the children are filled according to the order of other parents' genes. In the two points crossover, which is simpler, we select two points to cut the chromosome and replace with the other parent's chromosome piece. The rest of the genes are filled according to the order of the corresponding parent's genes. Mutation is another genetic algorithm operator that increases diversity. It is applied to each gene of each individual in the population depending upon a probability parameter. We used one of the well-known mutation methods, that is gene swap method. If we look at the sample gene swap mutation operation in the figure, we can see that the genes at index 2 and 6 are selected and interchanged. Local search methods are frequently used with the genetic algorithm models. In the local search, each individual in the current population is replaced with one of its better neighbors. In our GA, we use the variable neighborhood search, VNS, with a modification. We obtained neighbors by a gene swap operation with size 2, like in the mutation, and the first better neighbor is replaced with each individual. We defined a search size parameter to improve the diversity and time efficiency so that we determine the maximum number of neighbors to be checked. Elitism is the idea of storing the fittest individual or individuals of the current population in the next generation. Our GA stores only the fittest individual. After we roughly describe our genetic algorithm, now, let me talk about the experiment. There is a quadratic assignment problem library, CAPLIB. It contains various problem instances and optimum results for CAP. We use the problem instances uniformly symmetrically generated by Taylard. As a reference of success, we use Taylard's results obtained via a robust taboo search method in parallel computing. We tested our GA on 12 different sized problem instances by using the methods and parameters I have just explained. We tried to achieve the optimal values for the corresponding problem instances through two approaches. First one is to use the two-point crossover method and local search with size 70. In the second approach, the crossover method is changed to the position-based crossover and the local search size is decreased to 50. We calculated the ratio of the optimum reference fitness and the average fitness value obtained with our GA. Let's look at the results and conclude the presentation. Through the first approach, we achieved all results above 97.01% in the case of minimum costs and 96.03% in the case of average costs. 
when we changed the crossover method and decreased local search size. The achieved minimum costs have been above 97.05% and the average costs were above 96.54%. Notably, our model has obtained satisfying results, despite its simplicity, compared with the referenced model of Taylard. To sum up, in our study, we have modeled a genetic algorithm for quadratic assignment problem, CAP, which has a wide application area. We have tested our GA with different parameters, on 12 different sized uniformly generated problem instances in CAPLIB. We can state that, our model has obtained, satisfying results, despite its simplicity, compared with the referenced model. For the future work, we suggest, testing this GA, on asymmetric problem instances, available on CAPLIB. Also, implementing different crossover, mutation, and local search methods may increase the success rates. I would like to thank you all for bearing with me and for your attention. Before ending the presentation, I'd like to share the abstract and extended abstract of this study in both English and Turkish language so you can stop the video and take a look in case of necessity. Also, you can find our poster at the end of attachments.